Hi, welcome back again. This is Tom Jones, and I'm glad you stayed with me. I'm going to uh, uh, do another little exercise for you that I think you'll like. I'm going to show you how I do water. Now, <clears throat> again, you can have moving water, you can have waterfalls. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do some still water. And I'm going to do one other thing before I put in the water, though. I'm going to put in some rocks along the edge of the stream, and then I'll go ahead and put in the water for you. This is going to be a very simple exercise. Pay attention closely, and I think you'll enjoy this very much. I'm going to take my half inch uh, or three quarter inch flat brush to do the rocks. I'm going to pick up some of my uh, uh, burnt sienna color. I'm going to pick up some of my yellow ochre color. I want a nice uh, sort of warm color for my uh, rocks. So I want to make sure this is nice and clean. So watch while I mix this color. I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre. And then I'm going to use some sienna, burnt sienna. I've got those two colors. Watch what I do. In the foreground area here, I'm going to put in an area of rock. In this area, I want to keep the colors fairly warm. So watch how I do that. Just very simply laying it in color. Now, what I'm doing is I'm putting in what's called an underpainting at this point. All I'm doing is I'm laying in some sienna color. I'm also laying in some ochre color. And then I'll come back after this dries and then I'll, dis, uh, I'll outline or sort of uh, define the rocks just a little better with a dark side and a light side. You'll get to see that happen. I'll do the same on this side. I'll use, again, some of the warm colors over here on this side as well. Now, what I'm going to do in the background or the distant rocks is I'm going to do it just a little different. Because it's further away, in this case, I'm going to use some of my bluish green color that uh, I like to use in my skies and tree areas in these northern scenes. Watch what I do. I'm going to take some of my dark blue and some of my dark green. This is ultramarine blue deep and hooker green deep. And watch what I do. I just simply come in and lay in some color on that rock area in the distance. Very simply like this. Just continue on. And then I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to dry this for you. And when I come back, we'll define those rocks later. What I'll do is I'll dry it, I'll put in the water, and then we'll come in and we'll put some detail in this. And I'll show you how simple this exercise can be. This is going to be a lot of fun for you. I'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. I'm glad you stayed with me. All I did while I took that break was I dried the painting. I wanted to make sure this area of the rocks were nice and dry because I'm going to put the water in now. And when I put the water in, this area must be dry so that the colors don't mix together. Watch what I do. I'll put the water in, then we'll come back and we'll start adding some detail. I'll show you how simple it is to do still water. I'm going to take my one inch flat brush in this case. I'm going to come in and get some of my bluish green color. Again, this is that same color I've been using in my uh, mountain scenes, my cloud scenes and so forth. A nice smoky look. The same color basically that I used here in the rocks. Watch what I do. It's important to remember that as a general rule in painting water, still water, your brush strokes are primarily vertical, vertical and horizontal brush strokes. In this case, I'm going to use some uh, horizontal brush strokes and I'm just going to come across with a dry brush effect, meaning I'm just dragging that dry brush or that brush across my painting like so. It creates the illusion of some sparkle on the water and some color in that area to give the illusion that this is water. That's how simple it can be. Let me go back and we'll fill the brush up again. We'll go again along the edge here just to show you how simple this is. Nothing complicated about this. I'll come in and take my brush now with just water and I'll soften a couple of edges here and there. See how simple that is to create the illusion of water? Hardly anything to that. Leave some of the white space. You'll want to leave that white space because it looks like sparkle on the water. Now as I get a little closer, meaning I get to the bottom of the paper here, we're going to give the illusion this is a little closer. I might want to get a little darker here. So I'm going to add just a little more color to my palette and we'll come in and we'll get just a little darker maybe in a couple areas that are closer to me. Not a lot. Just smooth some of that out just a little bit and again it gives you the illusion. If you want you can take a tissue you can come in and soften some of that edge like so. That will create the illusion of, of that softness there. It will create the illusion of water closer to you. It's that easy. 
nothing complicated about it. That's all I'm going to do on the water at this time. Now I'm going to put some detail into these rocks. But again, I must dry this first. I don't want with the color of the rocks to bleed into the water. So I'm going to take a moment and I'll come right back after I dry it and I'll show you how we put the finishing touches on this particular exercise. Hey folks, thanks for staying with me. While I was away, I just took, so, I took a minute and dried this area that I did with the water. Now I'm going to start putting in some detail for you in the rocks. But let's review one thing. You'll notice that this area of rocks in the distance is a cooler value, or a cooler color, I should say, than the rocks in the foreground. As I come forward in my uh, painting, I want to make sure that I have the colors get maybe a little warmer in the foreground and stay cooler in the distance. That gives the illusion of distance in your painting. Let's go ahead and take my brush, and I'm going to start putting in some uh, darker side to some of these rocks. That will give you the look that these are, in fact, rocks, and it will give you a little bit of a contoured look to it. So I'm going to take some of that same dark green and dark blue that I've been working with, and I'm going to come in and just go to the edge of this rock area, some of these rocks, and sort of separate them and give the illusion that there is, in fact, some rocks here. Let me just take a moment and I'll soften with just water on my brush now. I'll soften some of these edges of the, of the rock area. And you'll start to see what appears to be rocks forming. Moving on a little bit, I'll take this particular area of rock here. Same thing, a little dark color on the side. It's a darker value of the same color that's already there. Same thing here, same thing here. Now I clean out my brush, take just water on my brush, and I'll just soften this one edge. So it's a hard edge coming over to a soft edge on this particular side. We'll do the same thing on this rock right here. I've got that particular rock that I wanted to deal with. So dark on that side, and again, that's how we show the shape of these rocks. Now what I'll do on these particular rocks is I'm going to come in and put in just a couple of more brush strokes Again, to give you a look of rock, to give it a little bit more of a look of rock, I should say. So watch this. Now I'm going to take my liner brush and we'll just put in a couple of little, oh, crevices or whatever on the rocks that sort of just give it some look of uh, a rock area. Maybe a little darker along the uh, crevices and so forth just to punch up the edge just a little bit more in a couple of areas. Something like that. That's all. Just a little darker to one side, a couple of crevices in it. That's all you need. And it gives the illusion of rocks. Now, I don't want to spend all day on rocks because that's not what the lesson plan is. But let me just take one thing. I'm going to take my brush now. This is my uh, three-quarter inch brush. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in the illusion of some shadows. In other words, we want to anchor some of these rocks just a little bit so that it gives the illusion that they are part of this overall painting. So I'm going to come in and just put a little shadow effect next to the edge of the rock, right at the base of the rock where the water is. That'll give you, that again, that illusion that this is all connected with the rocks and the water. I'm just pulling some of that color down. See how I'm just pulling some of that color down with my brush? And then if you want, you can pull some down a little bit more, some of that color down just a little bit more. Take your tissue and drag it down a little bit. Pull some of this color down a little farther on some of the rocks. See that? I remember I said earlier that that on still water your brush strokes are normally um, vertical and horizontal brush strokes. So this is part of that vertical brush stroke now. We did the horizontal brush strokes earlier. Soften some of the edge. So now it looks like it's connected. I'll let this dry a little bit. We'll come back and add a little bit more look of detail with maybe a couple of more darks in the areas of the rocks. Let's move on to the rocks in the foreground. We've got some burnt sienna mixed up, a little bit of dark. We'll come in and put a little dark side to some of the edges of these rocks. Very simply like that. I'll clean out my brush with just water on my brush. And what I'll do is I'll soften just a little bit of the edge of that. So you have a dark side and a light side. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's take some of these rocks and do the same thing on this side. A little bit of the sienna and a little bit of my uh, rose color and that'll create the illusion of some more rocks over here. Soften some of the edge on the, on the color. See what that dark color is? We're just softening a little bit of that color on the edge. 
and that creates the illusion of rocks there. Doesn't need much more than that. All right, now let me do one other thing. I'm going to put a little area of grass in here for you. This will connect. We got some grass here, some rocks, and so forth. And then we'll add a little bit more dark maybe in the back here to sort of anchor the rocks in the water. So you'll see that happen. All right, let's take and do a little bit of the uh, grass area. I'll use a little bit of my light greens. Uh, we'll come in and change color, a little bit of light green. Then I'll come in and maybe do a little bit of my gold ochre just for a little bit of an alternative. I'll come back in. I'll add some of my permanent green, get a different color green going on. So we'll do that. We'll give the edge of the grass maybe a, a little scraping there to create the illusion of grass in that area. We'll come back over. We'll take and add just maybe a little more ochre to this area right here. You saw earlier where I've used uh, spray bottles. So we can do that in a moment. I'll put some spray bottles to work on this particular painting. And we'll create that illusion. Watch this. Just a little bit of a spray bottle create some look of textures in the grass this way. I want to change colors, we'll go get the altar or the hooker green deep and maybe get a little darker in this area. So we've got a little grass area here on this particular side. Now what I want to do, I may take just a moment and go ahead and dry this one more time and then what I want to do is maybe come back here and anchor these. But before I do that, let me do one other thing. I want to come back and show you how we can create the look of the shape of these rocks by adding a darker color behind it. So there's going to be trees or mountains or something back here. So let me go ahead and give you the illusion or the look of some tree area back here. And you'll see these all of a sudden jump out. These rocks jump out for you. Again, going back to my nice dark rich color of blues and greens. And all I'm doing, this is called negative painting now. All I'm doing is I'm coming in and I'm painting the negative space behind whatever the object is. All of a sudden now they're starting to look like rocks over here. See that? Continue on. Paint around the rocks. Keep it simple. Now I'm not getting too elaborate in these demonstrations or these particular examples where I want to keep it fairly simple so you can see. But all of a sudden it takes on the look of rocks now. Now watch, watch what happens now when I come up and I can create the look of trees here behind this particular area. You'll notice that I'm always remixing color in my palette, always going back, remixing fresh color. I like to keep the colors fresh. I'm also going to lay in the color and leave it alone, meaning that I'm not going to spend too much time pushing the color around. I want to create the look of this tree and keep it simple without too much blending going on. Now watch what I do. I'll simply come in, create the look of some trees. I'm just going to do a a few of these so you can see how the whole painting or illustration lends itself uh, together in one piece here. So we'll do a little bit of the evergreen trees here. I think we'll do enough here so that you can see basically how this all fits into a painting. But notice how now the water starts to make sense to you when it's all anchored with the rocks and so forth. Let me see how dry that is. I may want to come back in, as I said earlier, and just punch this up a little bit with a little bit more dark in just a couple of areas on my rocks. So let me give that a try. Let's take just a couple of areas and just add just a little more, just a little more color for a couple of areas. Now what I'll do is just water on my brush. I'm going to, again, blend blend that color just a little bit. Now you don't want to do this everywhere, but certainly in a couple of areas, I want to highlight these rocks a little stronger. And that's a way of doing it. See that? Again, just a little darker. A couple of areas, and that's all it will take. Just water on my brush. Watch my, how I blend it now. Just blend it away and it makes those rocks jump out now. Give the illusion of rocks. Now you can see the rocks. Even though the lesson plan is not about rocks, but you can now see the water here for sure. The water really showcases at this point. Let me do a little bit more work with the water. I'm going to have some more reflection in the water from the rocks. 
The simpler you make this, the better it looks sometimes. A lot of people overwork the water or overwork rocks or whatever subject they're working on, and you don't want to do that. You want to keep it as simple as possible. Now you can see how that works. Let's take a moment and uh, let's go ahead and punch up a little bit on maybe the, on the darks over here. Just for a little drama. We'll add a little more drama to the painting with a little bit more dark. See how those rocks stand out now? We can do the same just over on this side just a little bit. And that's all it takes, okay? That's how simple it is to do the water. The reason I did the trees, the reason I did the rocks and the grass was to tie it together so that the water made more sense to you so it's anchored. I hope you've enjoyed this illustration. I want to show you another little trick again. Before we close, I want to take the end of my brush and I'm going to drag this brush, I'm going to drag it up and watch what I do here. I can create the look of some tree trunks. See how I do that? See how simple that is? Because the end of this brush has a beveled edge, I can come in and pull that color up and create the look of tree branches and so forth. A lot of fun you can have doing these little demonstrations. Thanks again for jo uh, joining me. I'm hoping that you had a great time or as much fun as I did. I hope to see you again soon in another one of my DVDs. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tom Jones.